Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to find the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for the function e to the x times the sine of x. So as you do this, we're just going to write down the Maclaurin series for e to the x and sine x and multiply them. So let's go ahead and do that. So the Maclaurin series for e to the x, recall, is the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So if you were to write this out, it would be 1 plus x plus, and then x squared over 2 factorial, etc. right? And for sine x, sine is an odd function, so it has only odd powers of x in its Maclaurin series. So in this case, it would be negative 1 to the n, x to the 2m plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. If it was cosine, you'd have even numbers. So it'd be 2n instead of 2m plus 1. And if you plug stuff in and you work through it, it's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus etc. Okay, so here let's go ahead and write it down very, very carefully. So we'll start with e to the x. I'm going to write a little bit bigger so you can see it. So it's 1 plus x plus and then it's x squared over 2 factorial plus, and then x cubed over 3 factorial. Now, how, how far do we go? Honestly, I don't know because I haven't done this problem in a long time. But I have a feeling, if I recall, we might need to go all the way to the fifth power. So I'm going to go all the way to the fifth power plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus and then dot, dot, dot. Okay, good stuff. So that's, that's the Maclaurin series for e to the x. This is being multiplied by the Maclaurin series uh, for sine x. So here, sine x starts with x, then it's minus x cubed over 3 factorial, then the sine alternates, so it's plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Let me do one more. I'm pretty sure we don't need it, but the next one would be minus x to the seven over 7 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. So we have to find the first four non-zero terms right, of, this, of this product. So let's do it in steps. So first, realize that there are no constant terms, right? Because if you take 1 and you multiply it by any of these, you're not going to get a constant. So first, let's start with the x terms. So x terms. So what are the x terms? Well, if we take 1 and we multiply it by x, we're going to get x. Okay. Uh, is there any other way to get an x term with a 1? No. If you take 1 and multiply it by any of the numbers over here on the right, you're going to get x cubed, x to the fifth, nothing there, so no good. All right, can you get x terms using the second piece, using this x here? You can't, right? Because if you do x times x, you get x squared. So for x terms, it's just going to be x. Okay, so now we'll go to the next power. So let's look at x squared terms. Okay. So can we get an x squared term with the 1? No, we can't, right? We can only get odd powers of x, right? x to the 1, x cubed. Because if we take 1 we multiply it by any of these guys over here on the right, there's no way we're going to get an x squared. So then we go to x and we ask the same question. Can we get an x squared term using the x? Uh, yes, yes we can. We can do x times x, right? That will give us x squared. Are there any other x squareds we can get with the x? No, there's not, right? There's no way we can get another x squared term. Then we go to this term here, and we ask the question, can we get an x squared term with, with this piece, x squared over 2 factorial? We cannot, right? Because if we take x squared over 2 factorial, we multiply it by anything over here on the right, there's no way it's going to be an x squared. So we're done. That's the x squared term. So the first term is going to be x. The second term is going to be x squared. Now let's go to the x cubed terms. So let's see, can we use the 1 to get an x cubed term? Yes, we can. We can do 1 times negative x cubed over 3 factorial, right? So we can do, we will get this, negative x cubed over 3 factorial, right? We can get that. That's one of the x cubed terms, right? That is one of the x cubed terms we can get. And that's the only one we can get using the 1. Then we go to x. Can we get an x cubed term using the x? No, no, we can't. Then we go to this one. Can we get an x cubed term using this? Yes, we can. Absolutely, right? We can take this one and multiply it by this one. And that's going to give us uh, plus x cubed over 2 factorial. 
And then we ask the question, are there any other x cubed terms we can get with this one, with this x squared? No. And if you go to x cubed, there is no x cubed term as you can get with x cubed because you'd have to multiply it by one of these and it doesn't work. The way it works is you have to pick one from each parentheses, right? So impossible. Um, you can combine these, right? Just think about the fractions. This is really um, negative 1 over 6 plus 1 half, right? Because 3 factorial is 6, 2 factorial is 2. You can factor out the x cubed. Multiplies by 3 over 3. This is really negative 1 over 6 plus 3 over 6. So it's really uh, 2 over 6, which is 1 third. So this term here is going to be one-third x cubed. That's going to be the x cubed term. All right, let's go to x to the fourth term, see if we have any of those. So x to the fourth terms. So again, we start with the x and we, we with the 1. So can we use the 1? No, we cannot, right, because we only get odd powers. Can we use the x? Uh, yeah, we can, right? We can do x times this piece here. That will give us negative x cubed, x to the fourth, sorry, over 3 factorial. And that's the only one we can get with the x. Then we go to this one. Again, we're looking for x to the fourth terms. Uh, not going to happen, right? Because here we get, we would get an x cubed here, x to the fifth here. Then we go to this one, looking for x to the fourth terms. Yep, we can use this one, right? x times x cubed is x to the fourth. That will be plus x to the fourth over 3 factorial. Oh, it's a sad day because these cancel. So you get 0, so no good. And then we can't use this one to get an x to the fourth term because, again, we have to pick one of these, so it fails. So now we're going to go to x to the fifth terms. x to the fifth terms. So x to the fifth terms, we can use the 1, right? 1 and this piece here. That will give us x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Can we use the x to get an x to the fifth? Um, no, we can't, right? We, that won't work. Can we use the x squared? Yes, we can do this guy times this guy. So 2 factorial times 3 factorial. So that'll be minus x to the fifth, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Okay, and then can we use the x cubed? No, we cannot, right? Because that'll just give us 4. In this case, it'll give us 6. So no good. We can use this one. We can take this one and this one. That'll give us plus x to the fifth over 4 factorial, right? We can use, let me just explain that again, we can use this one and this one. When you multiply them, you get x to the fifth. Um, let's just ignore the x to the fifths and add all these numbers. 5 factorial is 120, so it's 1 over 120. Uh, this is 2 times 6 minus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 24. I'm going to cheat and use the calculator. I don't, I don't <laughs> really want to work all this out by hand. Let's see, 1 over 120 minus 1 over 12 uh, plus 1 over 24. Uh, and then that's going to be negative 1 over 30, negative 1 over 30. So this will be equal to negative 1 over 30, x to the fifth. So again, you just go through and just remember you have to pick one from each parentheses. So what's the answer here? The answer would be x plus x squared plus one-third x cubed minus 1 over 30 x to the fifth. That is the final answer. That's it.